Well, we are back talking about the value of a Canadian law degree and whether it's the ticket it once was. My next guest intimately knows the job market for lawyers. Warren Bongard is president and co-founder of ZSA Legal Recruitment, and we welcome him to Headline. Good to have you with us, Warren. Thank you, Howard. Thanks for coming in. So uh, the question that I posed in the intro uh, is the question I'll ask you. Uh, it was always viewed as a ticket to a prosperous life. Is it that now, or was that a myth? It never was a myth. I mean, 20 years ago when I graduated, my entire class, I would say, uh, secured perfect employment almost as, as desired, uh, graduating law school. That certainly isn't the picture today. What is the picture today? Uh, well, as you know, it's been well reported. It's fairly grim. I mean, for newly minted lawyers, uh, the, the law degree isn't what it used to be. Uh, it's a great education, don't get me wrong, and I think it's a terrific uh, education uh, on that basis. But Securing employment uh, as a newly minted lawyer without having those sort of top grades out of law school is really tough. So what do they do? Uh, you know, the students who, who graduate and they don't have those grades, they can't go to Bay Street, uh, what do they do? Well, you'll be shocked to hear this. There's actually a shortage of lawyers, and I'm not sure many people would agree with me. Uh, but in smaller communities, there is a huge demand for young lawyers to come in and inherit and take over um, these retiring practitioners in small towns. And unfortunately, I think the issue is they're saddled with such debt coming out of law school that it's pretty tough to, to make that commitment because the money's not there to help pay that back. They could be spending the next 20 years of their career paying back their debt, working in Concordia or wherever that might be. So the kind of work they would get in, 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 in that kind of town, taking over a, retirees, uh, a retiring lawyer's practice would be what? Like local real estate deals, exactly. wills, all that kind of stuff? Exactly. It's a general practice and it's, uh, it's a going concern. Every small community needs lawyers. There's no question about it. And I've, I hear from many on a daily basis that are looking to retire and trying to monetize their practice and there's very little ways of doing it. And so trying to get young lawyers who are graduating to think alternatively to think different way than they have in the past, uh, it would be fantastic. I just don't know if there's a method to make that happen. So they're not interested in going those places? Most of them aren't. They're looking for Bay Street. They're looking for the big city compensation to, A, help back, pay back the debt, but B, because they think it's more desirable. Uh, but now you see so many lawyers coming out and are not practicing law. I'm, I'm a living example, having graduated over 20 years ago, and I don't practice law anymore. So, so, so what about what my previous uh, guest was saying, the dean of the Osgood Hall Law School, that uh, there are all different aspects to law now, you know, the technological, uh, the technology-based practices and so forth. Is that enough to sop up? Uh, the, 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 the new people out of the law schools for the big firms. I wish I could say yes, I don't think so. Uh, I think what's happening is that's taking over certainly some of the rules, but where what the converse is that you see a reduction in uh, M&A transaction work and corporate finance securities, which was the, sort of the mainstay for many of these law firms. A lot of these transactions are moved south, have reduced in numbers, and so while you're picking up privacy and all these new emerging practice areas, you see a drop in others at the same time. And more of a drop in others than you're getting from the new stuff? Absolutely. I, th I think the law firms today are really trying to figure, out, figure it out. And I, uh, you know, you talked about Heenan Blakey in your last session with Dean Sawson, and I, uh, I don't believe there's another Heenan Blakey coming this year. I, I hope not. Um, I just think it comes down to compensation and how law firms compensate their partners because it's the only business, if you think about it, that takes money out of the till every single year to pay their lawyers. Uh, listen, it's a great model. If you're a lawyer, you can make a lot of money, but I think going forward there needs to be a correction in the system. And so is the market in any way, based on what you see, beginning to self-correct? It is. There's a lot of inefficiencies that are being addressed. You see the emergence of these um, virtual law firms that have come on the scene. Firms like ours are getting uh, numerous requests to fill these vacancies from companies. And the biggest change, I guess, is that corporations are adding lawyers. I mean, you corporations. look at corporations, look at law departments and banks and in public companies and even private companies. They all have their own lawyers on staff. And, I, and more and more of them? Absolutely. Because of compliance issues, regulation? Well, a lot that? of it is that, absolutely, how you're right, but also because there's, a, there's an opportunity to save money. You know, you do the economic model and you realize that actually having a lawyer in-house, if you're spending X dollars every year on outside legals, you can internalize a lot of that and you end up saving money in the end. So are the students who are coming out of school recognizing that or are mid-career you know, mid lawyers 
starting to see that as a, an exit strategy from firms where you know things are tightening up or Absolutely. other things are happening. Well, partnership uh, at law firms now is so much more meaningful than it ever used to be. And so many are actually looking for the exits to go in-house, to work for large corporations. And the holy grail in-house is the general counsel job to sort of lead all lawyers within your corporation. But where I also see is lawyers going into non-legal functions within companies. What do you mean? Um, business development, corporate development, um, many in fact are going into AML, um, anti-money anti laundering is a big deal in banks now, which is not tra traditionally law, uh, and there's a ton of growth as you would guess in that. So I, I, I do believe there's a nice, nice story to be told here, but unfortunately your question before was about when does it happen, it's usually mid-career, not first year. Mm -hmm. And so we still need to solve the issue of newly minted lawyers coming out and having very little experience. And, our firm addresses those needs only for those that have experience, not for the ones that don't. Uh, you know, I, I talked briefly with the dean about what was happening in the United States near the end of the interview. What's your view on what's happening in the United States and what can we learn from it? Well, I've heard there's even a lawsuit uh, out there that's suing the law school for not giving, gaining or guaranteeing employment thereafter. Um, Who can ever guarantee employment? Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think the law schools are doing anything wrong in Canada. I think they're doing a good job. They need to hold steady, in my view, on their enrollment numbers uh, to are be responsible. Are they taking too many in now, uh, some of them? I, I, <laughs> Listen, I think some of them probably are, um, but it becomes an economic question whether they need more. As long as people going in understand it's a great education and that they aren't guaranteed employment thereafter, I see it as a positive. It's a, it is a great way to learn how to think. and that's But, what it, I, but is a law school going to tell that student when they sign up that, hey, this is just a great way to think? Uh, forget about trying to get a job at the end of it. Uh, I, I certainly don't think they'll be saying that to the <laughs> students, but I mean, it is one of the benefits you gain, not just how you think, but how you analyze problems. And it enables you to expose yourself to so many different career opportunities, especially for those that don't know what they want to do after an undergraduate degree. Good training for business. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Private equity, merchant banking, there's so many different examples. Are those kinds of uh, options being floated in front of uh, people uh, enough these days? Anecdotally, I can tell you banks have had great experiences with lawyers coming out of law school going into investment banking or just general banking roles. And I, I don't think there's a big demand out there, yet the banks appreciate the lawyers. So I think it's just a process that needs to happen. Get, you know, given everything that we've talked about, how is your own business faring through all of this? You know, surprisingly well. I mean, we've had uh, a high demand for, as I said before, for in-house counsel. So the, the corporations are keeping us very busy. Uh, and in the law firm world, there's a lot of jockeying for partners with healthy books of business. And so as long as there's that demand and law firms are trying to find ways to generate more top line revenue, there will always be demand for lawyers with practices. And, and you're sure that we won't have another Heenan Blakey this year? I can't be sure, but I'm certainly optimistic it won't happen again, it's at least this year anyway. I, I read the article recently and there's some predictions it will, and I, I'm not such a believer. Okay, well, we'll leave it there. Uh, very good of you to come in today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That's Warren Bongard. He's president and co-founder of ZSA Legal Recruitment. Coming up next on Headline, a law student's point of view. We'll be right back with more after this. Please stay with us.